Welcome to The Maternity Mentor. Today we will be talking about everything you ever wanted to know about your cesarean section incision. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm a board certified nurse practitioner and I have over 12 years nursing experience working in mother baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum and labor and delivery. I'm also an IBCLC, I'm maternal newborn nursing certified and I have received training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders as well as perinatal bereavement. After having a cesarean section, knowing how to care for your incision is very important. Let's explore what types of incisions there are, how to care for them, and symptoms you should not ignore. During your cesarean section, your doctor will make two different incisions or cuts. One incision is internally on the uterus in order to deliver your baby. This incision can be low transverse, low vertical, or classical. The other incision is made on your abdomen or belly. There are two different types of incisions that may be used for the abdomen. The first is up and down, which is called a vertical or classical incision. This incision is no longer used regularly and instead is used in special situations, including medical emergencies. Vertical incisions can be more painful, usually take longer to heal from, and scar more. The second abdominal incision is a horizontal or side-to-side -side incision, sometimes referred to as low transverse or bikini cut. This is the most common incision used today. A low transverse incision is just above the pubic hairline where it scars less and is easier to hide. This cut is done super low because this is where the uterus is thinnest and it results in less bleeding, less pain, and quicker recovery times. This is the preferred incision for women who may wish to attempt a VBAC or vaginal birth after cesarean delivery with future pregnancies. The uterus will always be repaired using dissolvable stitches. The abdominal incision may be closed using one of three different materials. The first type of closure your physician may choose to seal the incision with is a special surgical glue. This glue won't wash away when showering and is usually covered with a clear dressing to protect it for the first few days. Incisions using glue tend to heal fastest and leave the least amount of scarring. Unfortunately, glue cannot be used in every case. Your doctor may opt for a different closure for a variety of reasons, including complications during the surgery, use of a vertical incision, or excess abdominal fat. The next type of incision closure seen is stitches. Stitches are done using a sterile needle and special surgical thread. Some incisions use a combination of dissolvable stitches with glue. For those not using the glue, the stitches will usually remain in place for one week and will be removed in the doctor's office. Stitches take a little longer to close the incision, but there is less risk of infection than using staples. The final closure used on incisions is staples. Surgical staples look just like the staples used in paper. They are metal closures that stay in place for anywhere from three days to one week before being removed. Staples are the easiest to put in, but tend to pose the greatest risk of infection and scar the most. Most cesarean section incisions will heal without incident. However, any incisions have the risk of leading to scarring. One type of scar that may develop is called a keloid. A keloid happens when the scar is bigger than the actual incision line, leading to lumps or bumps in the scar tissue. The other type of scar that may develop is a hypertrophic scar. This is when a firmer, thicker, raised scar develops. A hypertrophic scar will not extend beyond the original incision line. Before we continue, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe so you can get our latest content to have a happy and healthy family. Now let's talk about caring for your incision. Having a cesarean section is major surgery. Therefore, it's important to take care of your incision properly. For starters, cesarean section incisions should be cleaned daily. Most women will rinse the area with soap and water and then pat dry. 
Never use any ointments, lotions, creams, or powders without your doctor's approval. Many of these products can actually cause infection. Allowing the incision to air dry is very important. When the incision remains moist, there is a higher risk of infection. You should wear loose fitting clothing to prevent irritation. And this will also allow the incision to breathe or air out more. With your doctor's approval, using a heating pad may help with pain. Your doctor may also prescribe pain medications or recommend over-the-counter pain medications. Pain management is important because with proper pain control, you will move your body naturally instead of being restricted. Natural movement promotes proper healing and reduces scar formation. You shouldn't exercise after delivery unless your doctor has cleared you to do so. This can put extra strain on the incision and can interfere with healing. Make sure you are attending all of your scheduled doctor's appointments. They will evaluate your incision at every visit and ensure it's healing properly and not becoming infected. Infection of your incision is one of the major potential complications after your cesarean section delivery. If you experience any of the following symptoms, you should contact your doctor immediately. Fever higher than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, redness at the incision site, an incision that is warm to the touch, swelling at the incision site, foul smell coming from the incision, drainage or oozing coming from the incision site, pain or tenderness at the incision site that is generalized and not specific, increasing pain, the area becomes hard to the touch or the incision splits open. After you have healed, there are treatments available for your cesarean section scar. Silicone gels or sheets can be applied to the scar to help break down the scar tissues, making the scar less noticeable. Research is unclear how effective these treatments are and they can be rather expensive. You will need to use silicone products for weeks to months in order to see the best results. For larger scars, your doctor may suggest steroid injections monthly to help flatten the scar. If you have a history of developing hypertrophic or keloid scars, your doctor may choose to inject steroids at the incision site during your surgery. Another option is to consider laser therapy. Laser treatments are used monthly to reduce the appearance of old cesarean section scars. Finally, the most invasive option is to have a scar revision. During scar revisions, the area is reopened and scar tissue is removed. The idea is that this new incision will heal with less scar tissue and will be less noticeable. This may not be a viable option for women with a history of developing hypertrophic or keloid scars. Before we finish, let's answer some common questions you may have. First question, how long does it take my incision to heal after my surgery? After two weeks, you will start to feel more like yourself. However, it can take anywhere from six weeks to three months for your incision to heal completely. Next, is it normal that my incision and abdomen feel numb? Yes, it is normal because during your surgery, some of your abdominal nerves were cut. These nerves will heal and your normal sensation should return in a few weeks. If it doesn't, be sure to contact your healthcare provider. Next, is it normal for my incision to itch? Yes, it's common and normal. It happens because the nerves have been disrupted. It's important not to itch the skin or apply over-the-counter treatments. Instead, you can use ice packs wrapped in a towel for five to 10 minutes at a time. Finally, how long will my scar be when it's healed? On average, your scar will be approximately four to six inches in length after it is healed. Having a cesarean section and taking care of your incision can be stressful. I hope this has explained what to expect from your cesarean section incision and how to care for it. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember to share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at the Maternity Mentor. 